As Donald Trump nears his impending indictment, he just issued a dangerous statement that is nothing more than a very thinly veiled threat attempting to turn the New York City Police Department against its own justice system. Here's what it said. Can you imagine the great New York City Police Department, correctly referred to as New York City's finest, who, for the first and only time in history, endorsed a president, me, and honored me as man of the year, having to defend and protect the defunders and cop haters of the radical left that want to put their greatest champion and friend in prison for a crime that doesn't exist, all the while the Soros back DA allows murderers and other violent criminals to freely roam the sidewalks of New York. So, few things here. First of all, the New York Police Department did not endorse Trump. They are a police department and therefore don't endorse presidential candidates. What did happen is the leadership of New York police unions endorsed Trump in 2020. And to be clear, that doesn't necessarily reflect the opinion of every member of the police force, and it certainly isn't the undying loyalty pledge, even in the face of any and all criminality, that he thinks it is. But to a larger point here, let's acknowledge what he's trying to do with this statement. He is signaling to the New York City police officers that they should not do their job and uphold the rule of law because if they're true Trump supporters, they would refuse to protect the people of New York from his potentially violent mob. And all of this is just an extension of his thinly veiled call to arms from just a couple of days earlier where he called for his supporters to, quote, take back our nation. And the veil is very, very thin here. Now, all of this is happening while New York law enforcement and the Manhattan District Attorney's Office are gearing up for a potential indictment this week. Just this morning, police brought out steel barricades outside of the Manhattan Criminal Courthouse. Now, Politico reported that an indictment can be expected between Monday and Wednesday, sending law enforcement scrambling to put in place proper defensive measures in the event that Trump's supporters do descend upon New York City and instigate violence, as Trump so clearly is begging for them to do. But while we don't know exactly when this indictment will be issued, we do know how. The grand jury will decide whether to bring charges, and then once the sealed indictment is delivered to the judge, the DA's office will discuss Trump's surrender with his lawyers. If Trump refuses to surrender, a warrant would then be issued for his arrest. And Trump obviously understands all of this, which is why he is desperately trying to drum up as much chaos and fear before the indictment is passed down, so as to try and force the justice system to rethink holding him accountable. I asked former federal prosecutor Glenn Kirshner about this call to arms strategy by Trump in my new legal series on YouTube, The Legal Breakdown. Glenn, what's Trump's incentive to make a post like this and to basically announce his arrest? Like, is it just to control the narrative and make sure that that when there's coverage of this story, that his call to arms is a part of it? You know, I think, first of all, the chaos is the point, right? Anything he can do to distract from the fact that he's about to be indicted in New York and then probably Georgia and then probably federally, anything he can do to sort of take the, the focus off that message that he's a serial criminal and put it on something else like, Brian, what you and I are discussing, the safety implications of what he has just posted, I think in Donald Trump's mind is all for the good. The other thing I feel like he's doing is he's trying to leverage public safety. He's trying to um, send the signal to the authorities that, you know what, I can kick up a lot of dust. I can endanger a lot of people. I did it on January 6th, and it looks like a, he's willing to do it again. So maybe you should rethink whether you really want to bring criminal charges against me. I actually think he probably looks back on Richard Nixon with envy, because Richard Nixon committed crimes in violation of federal law, in a very real sense, crimes against we the people. And what happened? Nothing. He lost his job, but he was pardoned and he got to live out his days in relative comfort. I'm sure Donald Trump has that in the back of his mind, and he is looking for any out he, think, he thinks he can find. And I believe that Donald Trump believes leveraging public safety like this gives him a bargaining chit that he is willing to play to his advantage. Leveraging public safety, that is exactly what Trump is doing here. And it's not a new playbook for him either. This is exactly what he did in the lead up to January 6th, where he called his supporters to town, including militia groups like the Oath Keepers, to drum up people's emotions, cause chaos, and then leave what he thinks is just enough plausible deniability to cover his own ass while his supporters rot in jail. A single scripted reference to rally goers marching to the Capitol became four, with President Trump ad-libbing that he would be joining the protesters at the Capitol. 
added throughout his speech were references to fighting and the need for people to have courage and to be strong. The word peacefully was in the staff written script and used only once. Here are some of these ad lib changes that the president made to his speech. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. So I hope Mike has the courage to do what he has to do. And I hope he doesn't listen to the rhinos and the stupid people that he's listening to. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. But we're going to try and give our Republicans the weak ones, because the strong ones don't need any of our help. We're tr going to try and give them the kind of pride and boldness that they need to take back our country. So let's walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. This is what he does. He knows how to communicate with his base using language that's coded enough for them to get the gist, while he thinks he has just enough room left to cover himself legally. And that's what he's also trying to do with this statement aimed directly at New York City police officers. He's like a child who thinks he just pulled one over on the adults, when the adults can very clearly and obviously see what he's doing. And yet, this is the consequence of a lack of swift accountability in this country. The perpetrator, in this case Donald Trump, thinks he can get away with it because he got away with it last time. He thinks he can instigate violence with impunity, and so the only way to stop him from doing this again and again is to hold him accountable quickly and with absolute certainty. So rather than intimidate prosecutors or jurors, what these thinly veiled threats by Trump should send is a very clear message that the justice system needs to hold criminals accountable. Do not flinch just because they used to occupy a powerful office. He is a criminal and he needs to be treated as such. And so far, it looks like that's exactly what Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg is doing. Over the weekend, he sent an email to all staff saying, Dear colleagues, we do not tolerate attempts to intimidate our office or threaten the rule of law in New York. Our law enforcement partners will ensure that any specific or credible threats against this office will be fully investigated and that the proper safeguards are in place so that all 1,600 of us have a secure work environment. This office is full of the finest public servants in the country. I am committed to maintaining a safe work environment where everyone's able to continue to serve the public with the same diligence and professionalism that made this institution so renowned. In the meantime, as with all of our investigations, we will continue to apply the law evenly and fairly and speak publicly only when appropriate. And that's exactly the right response, one that sends a clear message to Trump that he should probably think twice before continuing to instigate violence. And finally, just a reminder to Trump's supporters who are considering protesting on his behalf, and I apologize if you've heard me say this before, but I think it's a message worth repeating. He does not care about you. He doesn't view you as his friends. He views you as his marks. He didn't visit any of his supporters in prison for their actions on January 6th even once. He didn't spend a penny on their legal fees. The moment you become inconvenient for him, he will forget you ever existed. He proved just how little he cares in the aftermath of January 6th, so don't be taken for fools again. Before you go, a quick announcement. I've started a Spanish YouTube channel. Democrats desperately need to be able to appeal to Spanish-speaking audiences, so this is me doing my part. To help that channel get going in the algorithm so that we can finally start spreading our progressive message and breaking the conservative stranglehold on Spanish-speaking media, please subscribe and watch a few videos. The link to that channel, called Brian Teller Cohen Espanol, is right here on this screen. And of course, to see more of my content in English, make sure to subscribe to this channel as well. The link is also right here on this screen. Thanks so much for watching.